Okay, so I'm gonna take off my mask here. What we are doing right now is going to be etching, well, uh, printing an etched plate. So I have an older image uh, from, you know, several years ago, and it's a pretty small plate, and it has been printed, the edition's been printed. I've actually printed this quite a bit, so I've actually lost a lot of my finer detail in my aqua tints already, um, just through the, through running the press. Um, but we're just gonna use this for a proof today. Um, <clears throat> I cut my paper for it, and I have one sheet soaking over here. I think it's just Canson edition paper, so it's nothing special, but ideally when you're printing, if I'm gonna print all of my edition all at once, I'm gonna cut all my paper and have it all soaking all at once. Uh, and I'd like that to soak for at least a half an hour before I start printing, especially if you have a, 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 a paper that with more sizing in it. Um, but you know, you, you would probably be recommended to soak it for much longer than just a half an hour. Uh, let's see. So I've got my, my image here now. Printing is going to be different depending on the type of image that you have, uh, the depth of the etch, and like the materials, like this is a zinc plate. If I was printing a copper plate, I could print this in a different way where I'm using my palm, um, but these plates tend to be a little bit more jagged edged, so you wouldn't really want to do that. <clears throat> um, today, um, just for you printmaking students in Print One, I do want to say that uh, um, try to, when you're done printing, make sure that you put the lid on your inks and you put them on the shelf. I do keep finding um, inks open, the can of ink is left open, and I keep finding um, like this left with ink caked on it. That's really not how I want to have this studio work. I really want everybody to be responsible as a, this is a shared communal space. You know, pick up after yourself, wipe down all of these, these uh, palette knives, wipe down all of your glass, um, um, the uh, palettes, and put your loops away, put all of your tarlatan away, get rid of all your extra newsprint, because I do keep finding this area is kind of left like it was just, like somebody just left and left a mess for people to pick up. So let's not do that. Let's not be like that, okay? Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I have my hot plate warming up. I have it set to uh, just under 200 degrees because I find that that's perfect for this. Um, anything more and I find that the ink starts to get too loose. Uh, you also run the risk of baking the ink into your plate and, and having that become an issue with printing. But I just want to set it, set it for around 200. Um, turn it on, let it warm up. It's still actually not very hot right now. But um, and I do see people using this. I think I made the mistake of using this during the first demo to get underneath the skin. But typically we're not having to deal with ink skin in these intaglio inks because we go through them so quickly. So usually you don't even need to use this. I would just put, put it away. You know, there's times when we need our ink pal palette knives and things like that. And I don't even really need my, my, uh, my ink palette at all. So I mean, I mean, there's, if we don't need it, let's not use it. Um, I'm going to find a small card like this. Sometimes it might be handy to have two. I'll get out a piece of felt. This is old felt from our blankets. And all I'm gonna do, there's, you know, the ink is getting low in this. This is just bone black ink. I think this is Gamblin ink or Hanco. What do we got here? Yes, we're using uh, Gamblin etching ink. Sometimes you need to modify your inks, but for what we're doing, um, with this print class being kind of reduced in length and we're doing like more specific projects, we don't really need to do much ink modification. Um, I can use this ink straight out of the can and it produces a nice quality. Um, so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of ink. I don't wanna go crazy with it, I don't need a ton but I'm gonna use a plastic card and I'm using this card to really spread the ink into the grooves. 
Traditionally, you would use a leather or wool dabber, and it would be a, a bound um, piece of leather that you would start to dab the ink into the grooves and you would kind of twist it into the grooves of your, your plate. Um, I, I kind of like using these cards because I feel like I'm able to contain my ink a little bit better and reuse the extra bits. Just seems like it's a little bit easier. So you want to take your card and really apply a little bit of pressure you could also do this with, um, they do have plastic cards that you can purchase and, or like a credit card would work well if you cut that up. And I just want to go from different angles. I might pull just a little bit more ink. just for these edges. Try and go from multiple angles. Make sure that I get it in those grooves. Now when I'm spreading this, I don't want to do it like this, like I'm spreading peanut butter. I want to spread it like this because I'm really pushing the ink into those grooves. If I do it like this, I'm not really putting much downward pressure. That would be forcing the ink into those grooves. So this much works much better. And just go around from an angle, rotate my plate, come at it from another angle. And like I said, this would probably go a little bit faster, but the the hot press is still warming up, so it's not very hot. Now, the reason that we turn on the hot press at all is just to warm up the ink, and it helps to loosen it, loosen the, the ink body. Now, I can remove the excess at this point, and I'll just save that on my card, and I'll use that again. I can use that one again. And now, I need to switch to my, my Tarleton. I'm going to switch to one that is not stiff, but also so this one is getting kind of close to uh, its expiration date, but I kind of like these ones that are really, really inked up for my initial wiping. Now what, what I'm doing here, don't take that for granted. A lot of people will come over, they'll just grab a tarlatan like this and they think that this is good to wipe with. You do not want to wipe with tarlatan that's this loose. I can, you know, if I took enough time, I might be able to make that work. But I really want to do is find a spot that's not too bad and start curling in all of the edges in behind that spot so that I'm making a nice stiff pad of tarlatan. That's pretty stiff right there. And I'm just gonna do a twisting motion that helps kind of stimulate the, uh, or simulate that dabbing motion that you would have with the uh, leather dabber. And it just helps to push additional ink into the grooves. And I just wanna remove the excess ink by doing that. And now at this point, I can kind of put this one away and switch to uh, one that has a little bit less ink on it. Now these are two, and I wanna do the exact same thing. So I'm loosening this up. You wanna open up your, your cheesecloth or tarlatan, I mean. Find a nice clean spot and start to fold all of your edges back into it. Once again, I've got a nice stiff pad. Sometimes if my tarlatan is new, it's going to be full of starch. So you'll want to rub that around, open it up, crinkle it up, open it up, crinkle it up, and just loosen up the, you can see how stiff this is still. Um, so that's not the best state to use it. But sometimes if it's still stiff, I'll, I'll crinkle it up like this, make a pad, and then just kind of run that over the hot press a couple times just to smooth it out a little bit. 
Now this is, again, you can do this a couple different ways. You can pick this up and do circles like this. So you would do circles all the way around. You could do that on the hot press as well. You could also take a, a little card like this and just kind of butt it up against the edges. But the way that I've been doing it for a long time, just I I've, I've, was trained differently than the way I do it now. But I like to just line this up with the edge of the hot plate and moderate pressure just pull once across the entire surface rotate my plate so that it's off slightly and every time I'm doing this I'm lightening up on my pressure just a little bit because I don't want to pull out the ink from the darkest areas from the deepest grooves I just want to kind of slowly pull the image off of the surface of the plate Once you do that a couple times, unfold your tarlatan and fold it back up, find another clean spot, you know, give that a little buff. And again, I don't want any of these little straggly pieces in there. I want it nice and firm. Rotate my image. And I'm really not paying attention not to be touching the surface. And I can continue doing that very delicately now. I'm, I'm barely applying any pressure If I have a really deep, deeply etched plate, I could continue doing that. It works great on large plates because you can really um, remove a lot of ink quickly that way. And now I really want to pay attention to what I'm removing from my plate. I'm gonna look for another tarlatan. Here we go. So this one's a little bit stiff. This one's a little stiff too, but we'll make these work. So I'm, I'm doubling up on them just so I have more of a pad to, to work with here. Sometimes, you know, you don't want your tarlatan pad to be too small. It's nice to have it kind of a little bit bigger in your hand, but I do have big, big hands, so it's kind of easy to tell. So, okay, now I'm wearing this. I like to wear a leather glove on my left hand because I can hold it, and I'm pretty agile with moving my plate around. You'll get better at that. If it's still too hot, you could set it aside for a minute, let it cool down a minute. Or you can kind of try to, try to do this off the plate a little bit. But at this point, I really wanna be careful. So I'm looking for areas. I don't wanna to remove too much ink. I just wanna kinda of soften the feathery edges all the way around here. And so I'm just doing circles now very delicate i'm basically just using like the weight of my hand and allowing the ink to kind of cling off of the plate onto the tarlatan so i'm i'm really not applying any pressure at all and rotate that and just try to go around get all of the plate equally change the direction Make sure you're, fo you're getting those corners because a lot of people will kind of ignore the edges of the plate and they'll focus on the center of the plate. You know, we want to treat everything kind of the same here. And now inspect that. So that was kind of like once all over. And I'm probably not going to be able to get a whole lot more out of this because I have lost a lot of my detail and it's not a very deep deeply etched plate. So I'm just gonna do one more little pass here and I can look at areas like where there's no aqua tints at all, just as a gauge. Look for my highlights, make sure that they're popping a little bit, a little bit of highlights popping throughout the image. So look for like the pupil of those eyes, right? Those areas of focal points and things like that. And that's good. I don't want to overdo it now. So I'm going to put this aside. Now, some people actually, you could do this without any tarlatan at all. You could just use um, phone books or newspapers or newsprint. Um, I like to 
depending on the image type, you can take one of these, and you could do all of your wiping just with newspaper. Um, so, but I like to just use it, I kind of lick my hands, I know we're probably not supposed to do that right now. And just at the very end, move a piece of newsprint around on the surface. It is kind of hot. And that will just pull up some of the last little bit of tone and It'll give me some some highlights that I might not have been able to see as well. Um, but again, I, I almost prefer not to do this if if uh, if I can. Because sometimes you can overwipe by doing this, and I'm getting close to that risk right now. But I wanted to show you how to do this. Okay, looks good. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is take a piece of my cloth. So this is just cut up pieces of old sizing catcher. And I wanna carefully go around the edges of my plate. Remove any of the excess. Look for like little pieces that are clinging on. This just helps me keep a nice clean border or plate mark when I'm printing and I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're going to come over here and let's see, I think I'll use this press right now. I think this is a little bit. I think the pressure is a little bit more established on this one. And I'm gonna line this up. Um, there's a few different ways to do this, but what I'm gonna do is just kind of aim for this corner to go into that corner. And watch where I drop this. I'm gonna, it's gonna make contact back here, and then I can kind of scooch it up into that corner slowly line it up with that line and then just drop it that way there's not any like residual pieces of of ink that are around the border and I know I'm gonna get a pretty clean print that way now if you do have little bits of ink that maybe are around and you don't want those to get onto your image just have a nice clean piece of cloth kind of wipe down around if it's a spot that's really close to the, your image maybe get something with a point like this and i see a little spot that might print I'm not sure no it doesn't look like it will so you know go in with a little point and and try to clean that up Okay, so now I need my paper, but I still have some ink on my hands from the gloves. So I'm gonna wash my hands again, but then I'll show you a little trick as well. All right, so I don't, I don't wanna have any ink on my prints Now, there, there may be a time when your, your fingers are just too inky, right? And you really, really can't get, get them clean at all. And in that case, you might wanna cut some tabs out of like a harder stock paper. Just some small tabs like this that you can have around and fold them over. Do this when your hands are clean though. So, and just leave these next to the press or wherever your water basin is. All 
Now you can take two of these, come over to your paper, and instead of grabbing it with my inky fingers, I can grab it with this paper. So just making that little tab. Let it drip dry, right? Bring it over to your clean blotters. Find a spot that's clean. We'll get some fresh ones out here soon. Take my roller and just roll just a couple times. I'm just removing the excess ink. I don't want to do this with my hands because I don't want to get ink from my hands onto the blotters because then it'll get onto the paper. Take my paper tab. There we go. Now I've got this back again. Take another tab and hold your paper from opposite corners. That's typically the best way to do this. Now, I'm not sure, I didn't measure this paper specifically for this plate, but if I want to give this a one inch border, I just need to line this paper up with that edge now. Um, I'm gonna go past it slightly though, because I do think that this paper is slightly bigger. And once it's down, leave it. If it shifts a little bit, don't don't try to lift it up because it's most likely just going to make it worse so once it's down leave it down now this pressure we set this press earlier and the pressure was pretty good we're going to just take this proof i like to hold my blankets back like this once they're engaged because it seems like there's less buckling that occurs sometimes if you go like this and the pressure's too much it'll stretch these at, at different rates so i prefer to have them up like this and as they're going i'm just paying attention to the blankets let them go down like that now that pressure seemed a little light so i'm gonna want to crank that up and i can check this there's really not, if I'm, you know, this is a proof. So I can go run this through again, but I've already run the press, the print through the press this way once. If I now shift it around and just run it through the opposite direction, I'm stretching the paper. Under the pressure, this paper is being calendared. And so it's stretching as it goes through, especially the wetter it is, the longer it's been soaking. So I really don't wanna do that, but as a proof, it's not a bad thing to do. You know, you just want to make sure that your press, your pressure is good. I can kind of lift up a corner and that seems, that seems fine. That seems all right. I did increase the pressure a little bit. So I know the next print will be a little bit more rich. And then I'll want to just inspect my print, you know, look for any anything that I should have done differently, any problem areas with my wiping. Um, I'm not really seeing anything. I did intentionally over wipe this a little bit with that newsprint. I would have preferred to kind of leave that a little bit less, but it does help you to be able to see some of the highlights in your prints a little bit better. Um, I did increase the pressure slightly, so I know that the next one is gonna be a little bit better and I guess that's it so at this point I want to get my glove back on anytime I'm handling my plate move my plate and then I'm gonna get some press wash so this is just simple green solution and we usually hang it on the pr presses Take some paper towels. And I wanna clean the press bed in between prints. And then I'll just leave this right here and I'll use the same piece next time. So next time I come and I put my 
print down you know when I clean the press I'll just reuse that it just makes everything a little bit easier now if I was going to take another print I would bring it directly over here there's still residual ink on the plate and so that's good um, the next print will actually be a little bit better excuse me The next, um, so I would print this again, I would ink it up the same way that I just did, and then I would do all the wiping the same and bring it over to the press and, and print it again. If I'm done with my edition, uh, I didn't mention this also, I would probably take my prints if I'm doing an edition and put them on the rack over there to dry overnight. And then I would come back in the morning and, and assess them. If I'm done with this, I'm gonna turn off the hot plate. Put that away. And now I need to clean my my plate. So in the parts washer, turn it off right back here. And I wanna take one of these toothbrushes. Remove all the excess ink that's in those grooves. If I allow ink to dry in those grooves, it'll be very difficult to remove it later on. So I wanna make sure to, to get this all out now. We use a toothbrush because it's a little bit more gentle. Use a soft toothbrush. And when that's done, turn this off. Remove all the excess ink, front and back. Bring it over to the sink. And then use some soap and water, right? You could use some common if you want to, but I would just use some soap and water. Remove the excess again, dry it and put your your print away. Um, then I'd come back to my workstation, probably put some gloves on, and I wanna clean up. So, I mean, I this was kind of a mess when I came in, and I don't wanna leave a mess for the next person. So, this can be reused, that could be reused. Put those away, take the card, done with that. Oops. Put my ink away up here there's a little left in there too I want to clean this properly so mineral spirits that's what this is for that's why we have it in this space so please try to contain your messes a little bit while we're we're here working together Actually, I'm just gonna get rid of the glove. So I'll clean my hands afterwards. Mineral spirits does dry your skin out quite quickly. So if you have sensitive skin, you might wanna make sure you're wearing the gloves, latex gloves. Clean the blade and also the handle. 
the handle is oftentimes more important because that's what we're touching. Put that away and then take all my dirty pieces and wipe down all the counters. You know, if, if you do this every time you print, it'll be a lot easier to maintain uh, than, you know, this is probably four or five people who've printed and so this is kind of built up, but it was actually just yesterday that I cleaned this. So um, just want to make sure that we're keeping this space cleaned up. And a little bit of mineral spirits goes a long way. I might make these disappear because I don't know if we even need them. Okay, and that's it. So make sure everything's tidied up. Take the lid down on my parts washer and check to see if my acid lid is down and turn everything off and then I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm all set. Um, I'm actually gonna be printing, doing a little bit more with my Aquatint test strip. So I'm gonna leave that open for now. But um, hope that was helpful and see you soon.